Now let's do a bit of a deep dive into the effect of exchange rate, changing exchange rate and policy. Of course, when I say policy, I just mean two things. I mean uh, monetary policy and I mean fiscal policy. We'll take a look at them one by one. Let's start with monetary policy. So let me draw the diagram first. Fairly straightforward explanation. Uh, we have eyes here, LM here. This is our equilibrium point. So suppose we have, this is the interest rate. And this is the output that we have. And suppose that the government imposes uh, contractionary monetary policy, okay? That means that interest rate is going to go up. If interest rate goes up, LM is going to go up. We have higher interest rate. And we have a lower up. Now, right beside this, I'm going to draw something else. I'm going to put exchange rate here and interest here. And what we are going to have is this. And this is the interest parity relation, which you all should be familiar with by now. So initially we were at this point and we had E exchange rate. And then once interest rate is increased, we go from I to I prime. We also have a higher exchange rate, right? So here's the finding. As I said, it's a fairly straightforward explanation. Is that whenever there is a contractionary monetary policy, I'm talking about contractionary, hopefully you guys can figure out the opposite case of an expansionary monetary policy. Whenever there is a contractionary monetary policy, uh, it's going to lower output. We knew that, okay? But initially what we used to think is that this fall in output would come through a fall in investment, which is what we saw in this first diagram. But now what we are seeing is that a rise in interest, interest is also going to lead to a rise in exchange rate, which is what we see here. And when exchange rate goes up, we are going to import more and we are going to exchange less and this effect is also going to contribute to the fall in Y, okay? So once again, we were only focusing, the direction of the relationship does not change. When interest rate goes up, output Y is going to fall. But so far we were focusing on just one effect, but there's also a second effect, which may mean that the overall outcome of the fall in Y will be higher than we had anticipated. Okay, so that's for monetary policy. Hopefully you guys can figure out what will happen when there's an expansionary monetary policy. It's straightforward. Uh, now let's take a look at fiscal policy. Okay. So once again, I'm going to start off with drawing the diagram. Y here, we have Y here. Ah, yes. LM. So initially we have interest. Y. This is where we are. Okay. And I'm going to draw this as well. So we have E here. We have I here. This is an upward sloping curve of interest parity relation. And what we get is this. At an interest rate of I, we have an exchange rate of E. Okay, now let's say that the government implements 
an expansion of FS Bookmarks. And once again, I'm just going to talk about this, but hopefully you guys can figure out what will happen when there is a contraction or a fiscal policy, okay? It's just the opposite thing. So there is an expansionary fiscal policy. So what that means is that the ice curve will shift to the right, right? As a result, the initial effect is this. Y is going to increase, right? Now, here's the thing, if the feds, the central bank, are fine with this rise in output. They will not change the interest rate. And as a result, this is where it ends. Absolutely no different from what we had been studying so far in this and uh, in this course and also in 207, is that when there is an expansionary fiscal policy, uh, the ice the right and as a result uh, y increase but interest rate is unchanged no different however there is also a possibility that the central bank might be worried that this rise in income will make people spend more and when people want to spend more it may lead to inflation right and so the central bank might decide that we need to dampen this we need to reduce how much money people spend and as a result and we have seen this often that whenever there is an expansionary fiscal policy the central bank might counter that with a contractionary monetary policy they increase the interest rate as a result, people are encouraged to save more. And when they save more, they spend less. When they spend less, in inflation doesn't increase. So let's see what happens. Mm, suppose it's increase the interest rate. So we end up I prime. At I prime, uh, a few things have happened is that first of all since interest rate has gone up we know this relationship exchange rate will have to go up that's one thing and the second thing is right here we end up in y prime prime which is still more than y but it's less than y prime okay so let's sum up what we saw was that for monetary policy there is no change i mean we expect a contractionary monetary policy to lower income that is what's happening but now there is a second channel through which this effect is being felt that we didn't know about previously for fiscal policy if in this case, we've taken the example of an expansionary fiscal policy. If in this case, the central bank is happy with this rise in income, then what uh, the effect will be exactly what we had been seeing so far in this course. However, if the feds are worried that this will lead to higher than uh, acceptable level of inflation, they may want to dampen spending by increasing interest rate, in which case they will implement a contractionary monetary policy. In which case, look, what is the overall effect? We knew that an expansionary fiscal policy will lead to a rise in Y, okay? And that is what we have. We've gone from Y to Y prime prime. So no changes there. But if the feds want to reduce this, what this will also do is that this will increase the interest rate and it will increase the exchange rate. And the rise in Y may not be as high as we were hoping for, okay? So that's the only difference uh, between this two. 
Now, what's important here is this is, first of all, this is a very interesting and a very important relationship, actually. This, this. So this relationship was first talked about in the 1960s by two economists called uh, Wendell and Fleming. So this is known as the Mundell Flaming model. Okay. When we take effectively, let me go up. Uh, where is it? Here. So when we take the ice and LM and we only look at the real cases, uh, sorry, we only look at the nominal cases, so nominal and interest rate and nominal exchange rate. Uh, and of course, we add foreign trade into the mix and all that. That is known as the Mundell Fleming model. Okay, so just remember this name because uh, as eco majors, you guys will come across this quite often uh, in this course, of course, and also in future courses. So just remember the Mundell Fleming model and what this model tell us. Uh, what are the major findings of this model? We've talked about them here, right? In this video, effectively, the effect of exchange rate on policy. 